for watching our internet edition of Nightline. Today, a story about the power of the little guy, an ordinary American willing to stand up to his own government. Mark Klein is his name. He was working for the phone company when he stumbled across evidence of a top secret government spying program. This is the story of how and why he finally decided to reveal it. He's spoken publicly for the first time to ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, in a Nightline exclusive. The United States government has gone to great lengths to keep what 61-year-old Mark Klein knows from becoming public. Anybody with a security clearance, they said, who reveals any of this sort of information will be prosecuted. And that's when I realized that I was in something of a unique position because I was able to expose some of it without breaking any security rules because I didn't have a security clearance. Until he retired, Klein had spent 22 years working at AT&T in San Francisco as a technician, one of the faceless backroom union technicians who keep the phone lines and the internet connections running. One day the site manager told us that we would be getting a visit from an agent of the National Security Agency. From the NSA. From the NSA. It was very explicit. The NSA, headquartered outside Washington, D.C., is the country's most secret intelligence agency, in charge of intercepting electronic communications around the world, assigned the task of tracking this country's foreign enemies. And it was strange to me that the NSA would be in a at and office to begin with, because it was my understanding, going back to the 70s, that they do foreign interception, not domestic. But Klein says he soon began to hear about a secret room being built on the sixth floor of this AT&T building, connected to cables for both foreign and domestic Internet traffic. This is a picture Klein says he took of the room. The entry was highly restricted. In order to get into that room, you needed not only an ordinary key, you needed to know the code to punch into a keypad on the door. And the only person who had both of those things was the one guy who was cleared by the NSA. But Klein says for all the secrecy, AT&T technical documents describing the equipment in the secret room, these documents and others were left lying about the area. So I picked them up, I looked at them, and, and then I almost fell out of my chair because after I studied it a bit, I realized what they had done. Klein says the documents show how the NSA had installed what is known as a splitter in the secret room, connected to the trunk lines of 16 other major phone and Internet companies. And the purpose was to make copies of all the Internet traffic going through the fiber optic cables, all of it. This is domestic traffic as well as international traffic. All, all of it that went through the splitter was copied and sent to the secret room. So in a sense, they are vacuuming up, scooping up in every... Sense they are blindly vacuuming up everything going across those links. And you're certain of that? I'm certain of that. That's the physical arrangement. There's no dispute about it. You saw that? I saw that. I, I looked at the cables. I traced the cables. I know where they went. The documents show where they go. They go to the secret room. Our efforts are focused on links to Al-Qaeda and their known affiliates. But Klein says it wasn't until he so saw President Bush speak about his administration's surveillance program that he decided to go public. And I'm watching all this and I'm getting angrier and angrier. In other words, if Al-Qaeda or their associates are making calls into the United States or out of the United States, we want to know what they're saying. So most people hearing that would think, well, I don't make calls to Al-Qaeda, so it doesn't affect me. That's what they wanted you to think. They tried to make you think it was about phone calls. But a lot of it is also about the Internet. And it's about gobs and gobs of information going across the Internet. It affects everybody. And that's the part that they haven't let out. And that's the part that I've decided has to be uncovered. But getting the story out was easier said than done, Klein says. He first went to one of the top reporters at the Los Angeles Times, turning over all the AT&T documents he had collected. And he worked on it for weeks. It's going to be a big story. This is going to be big. And then suddenly he told me on the phone one day, uh, it's delayed. Yeah, uh, 
Well, our top guy at the LA Times is going to have a meeting about this with the then National Direct Director of National Intelligence, John Negroponte. And I sort of thought, this does not sound like good news. To make the long story short, after this meeting with the government, the story was killed. The Los Angeles Times confirms it was contacted by John Negroponte and then NSA Director Michael Hayden, now the director of the CIA. The decision to kill the story was made by then Times editor Dean Batke, who now runs the Washington Bureau of the New York Times. Batke told Nightline he made the decision not because of any government pressure, but because Klein's facts could not be confirmed. We didn't think we had a story, he said. Was the reporter upset? Or? Yes, he was upset. But what could he do? He had to keep his job. As soon as he told me that was going on, I went to the New York Times. The New York Times did run its story, and the Civil Liberties Group, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, filed suit against AT&T, using Mark Klein's heavily redacted account as evidence of what he called an illegal and dangerous Orwellian project. We are at war. We have enemies that want to kill us. I understand that. But this country uh, has certain traditions of liberty. These are not minor matters. We're not going to give those up, and we shouldn't give them up. You start taking everybody's emails, you've crossed the line as far as I'm concerned. The NSA will not confirm or deny the existence of the secret rooms. But intelligence experts say what the NSA does with Internet traffic is to screen it for references or connections to suspected terrorists. They consider it legal because they haven't read those communications or heard those communications. They've just put it through a computer and it's gone in one end of the computer and out the other end of the computer. And out of the millions, there's only, um, you know, maybe a, a, a thousand or so that they may get kicked out that actually get read. AT&T will not confirm whether this office in San Francisco or any other office in the country has secret NSA rooms copying Internet traffic. In a statement, AT&T said it is fully committed to protecting our customers' privacy. We do not comment on matters of national security. The government continues to fight to have the lawsuit over the secret rooms dismissed, saying it could, quote, cause exceptionally grave damage to the national security of the United States. Do you think in any way you're helping terrorists by revealing no, this operation? No, I think I'm helping defend the Constitution. The only people who are being kept in the dark is the, is the American people who are being misled and not realizing, not being told that their private information, that their liberties are being destroyed and trampled on.